Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for having this important hearing and to our witnesses for being here today. It is undeniable that we have a national security and a humanitarian crisis at our southern border. Under Secretary Mayorkas's leadership at the Department of Homeland Security, the number of illegal border crossings has reached a record high, and many of these crossings are unaccompanied children. These children are vulnerable to trafficking, exploitation, and other forms of abuse. Just last month, we saw a migrant child who arrived in Safety Harbor near my district without a parent or guardian who died in federal custody. Tragedies like these are avoidable and preventable. And today we've heard testimony about decisions that are being made at the Department of Homeland Security that have facilitated this crisis. Mr. Wolf, I'd like to return specifically to a line of earlier testimony you were providing about the decisions of Secretary Mayorkas to suspend certain policies that have had the net effect of endangering these unaccompanied children who are coming across our border. Specifically, you touched on a couple of things. The, the vetting of sponsors and household members for these chi children is not being done appropriately, and that site visits have been eliminated. Would you tell us, please, a little bit more about those safety protocols and the significance of them not being done effectively? Sure. Once children come across that border and Border Patrol apprehends them, they are quickly transferred over to HHS facilities where they stay until they're able to find a sponsor, and the sponsor uh, comes, picks them up, and, and they do that. What we were finding was that individuals coming to pick them up, we didn't know who they were. Um, and the background checks and the type of vetting that was done was not sufficient. We wanted to make sure that we were protecting those minors and that they were going into households, um, that they wouldn't be trafficked, they wouldn't be further trafficked in. Uh, but again, this administration, for a variety of different reasons, I think we could only guess, decided to reduce the amount of vetting on those sponsors that come and pick them up. But it's not only the sponsor, it's the, again, it's the others in that household. So it's not enough to, to do that background check on, on one adult. But if there's five other adults in that household, you want to know who they are as well. Again, they have reduced those vetting requirements, site visits as well. And my, my guess, and it's, it's a guess, is because... Early on in this administration, the number of children coming across that border in such astronomically high numbers was backing up HHS facilities. There were too many children in there, and so the quickest way to get children out of those facilities is to reduce the amount of time they're in the facility, which is to say, reduce the amount of vetting, because vetting does take time. We need to make sure that we know who those individuals are that are picking up these children. But if you reduce that amount of vetting and you reduce the time, then the children can go through those facilities quicker there's not amount, there's not lines and they're not backing up. And Mr. Wolf, is it correct to say that those protocols, those measures that you used to implement with checking the people, checking the sponsors, checking the people who are living in that home, verifying that the sites are safe and conducting that ongoing monitoring of the sites, was that an important part of ensuring that we're keeping these unaccompanied minors safe when they're here in our country? Well, absolutely. From the HHS uh, perspective, Chief Scott talked about it earlier, DNA testing is something that Border Patrol could do. So we actually tried to find it early in the system, as early in the system as humanly possible, which is when they cross that border and they go before that Border Patrol officer to do the, that questioning, that line of questioning. And again, as you reduce that, you're taking more and more protections away from trying to protect these children and trying to reduce the amount of trafficking uh, that's going on. Thank you. And on that subject, Mr. Scott, would you please return to the subject of DNA testing and tell us what role, what, what role does DNA testing, why is it important in our efforts to combat human trafficking and the exploitation of children? It's very important for the simple reason you're trying to identify people and you're trying to make sure people's stories actually match. I left out of my, my statement earlier, in the INA, it mandates that we fingerprint and photograph anybody over 14 years of age. It's silent below, but council has determined that you need reasonable uh, articulated facts above and beyond to do the fingerprinting and photographing of minors. So most children, because again, Border Patrol doesn't have time right now to get those facts, aren't fingerprinted or photographed. So there's no historic data to look at to figure out if the child is being recycled or not. Then on top of that, the massive flow. So the DNA testing, the real actual rapid testing at the stations, and just the threat of that could take a potential two or three hour interview and make it into minutes. 
because people broke left and right that it's not really my kid because we would tell them, you're gonna be prosecuted. You can tell me the truth now. But now they don't have the ability to do the threat. And then if someone sticks to their story, they don't have the ability to actually identify that there is no actual biological connection between these people. More children will be trafficked. More children are at risk. Thank you, sir. Mr. Chairman, I yield back. Gentlelady yields. I now 